Hi there. I love railway stations. To me, a railway station is the starting off point for a, perhaps a big walk, a long railway journey, or as in today's case, a wild camp. We're actually at uh, Bamford railway station in the Peak District. Um, tonight's camp, I don't think you can see it, but through those trees, right on the top, is Bamford Edge, and that's where I'll be camping tonight. Uh, it's just an overnight. Uh, but if the weather's clear, there is some fantastic views of Lady Bower from up there. Tonight's weather, I think the skies are going to be pretty clear, so I brought a fair bit of camera equipment with me, and I'm hoping to get some uh, photographs of the moon. And then the following day, we'll see what the weather is. Um, if it's clear, um, it's a perfect spot to get some uh, fantastic views of Lady Bower. Anyway, I'm going to make the long climb up onto Bamford Edge now. Finally on the top of uh, Bamford Edge. Bit of a slog up there, especially with all this <coughs> gear on my back. The weather don't look so sparkling as well. Uh, it's supposed to be quite bright, but keeps clouding over. So what I'm gonna do, uh, it's only mid-afternoon, I'm gonna find somewhere to pitch my tent. Um, best place to pitch would be right on the edge, but at this time you've got people walking about and also in the morning, I don't necessarily want to get up at the crack of dawn if the weather isn't sparkling. Um, so I'm going to set my tent back, probably a uh, two, I know, a few hundred metres from the edge path, so it's a bit more secluded. Then I'll uh, feel a bit more relaxed and get on with my meal, and I'm not going to get disturbed. So I think I'll have a wander about up here, find somewhere nice to pitch. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you in a bit. Right, uh, as you can see, I've got my tent pitched. Um, I think it's only about half two, three. Sun's dropped below the horizon. It's gone all hazy or cloudy, and um, I'm starting to lose the light straight away. So I'm going to get on and cook my meal. Um, there's still people on the footpath, but like I say, I set my tent back. It's in, a, it's in a bit of a hollow. Nobody really knows I'm here. So I, I feel happy. I can relax, get on with my meal. Nobody's going to disturb me. And tomorrow, if I don't want to get up at the crack of dawn, get all my gear away. Um, I don't have to. I can have a bit of lying knowing I won't be disturbed. So I think I'll get on with me, my meal while the weather's uh, still still light and that, yeah, yeah. Right, gonna get on with me, my dinner now. Ain't gonna be easy to film this because it is now raining. Anyway, what we're having tonight then, one of my favourites, ribeye steak. Nice bit of steak fills you up, keeps you warm. I've got some onions there, I'm going to fry the onions first and then mix them with water and gravy browning and hopefully that will uh, make me some nice gravy to go with the steak. So that's that side of it. Simple mashed potato, just add water, a bit of butter and a tin of peas. Now you can't get an easier meal than that and that'll provide me with a nice warm filling meal. Um, 
and for uh, a sweet I've got various bits of chocolate and stuff like that so hopefully that will fill me up so first of all I've got a stove going olive oil I'm going to get on and get these uh, onions on the go I said it won't be easy to film, it's now pouring down with rain but there's not much you can do just having to film it from a different angle at the same time as uh, I'm doing the onions I'm just boiling some water up which will do for the potatoes right that's the, uh, the onions nicely browned so we can put the best bit in now nice piece of ribeye steak oh that does look nice That's a potato in. So it's just a matter of whipping that up and that'll provide the mashed potato. Right, that's the steak. So you can say that steak is probably done now. Yeah, that looks dumb. So to sort of make the gravy, I'm just going to pour some water out of the peas. This is just simple OXO gravy. And just mix all that round with the onions. some nice onion gravy at the end of the day it's all going in this frying pan I find the beauty of the frying pan it keeps all the food warm my potatoes are a bit runny So, in adverse weather conditions Well, after a bit of a struggle in the, the rain I finally got my dinner ready Mashed potatoes, very nice a Bit of onion gravy But best of all This um, ribeye uh, steak tastes beautiful mm. Mm. that tastes fantastic huh? potato that's finally thickened up a bit so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get on finish this off everything cleared up mm. the weather forecast is that it's gonna clear it's gonna be a bit cloudy but should be some clear periods later on so I'm hoping to try and get some photographs of the moon that was one of my reasons for coming on the camp uh, trying out a new lens and trying to get some pictures of the moon but he never said it was going to rain like this so uh, who knows what it's going to do so um, I'm going to enjoy this and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you in a bit
Hi there. Like I said, one thing I wanted to do on this trip was uh, photograph the, the moon. Now it was, uh, it's forecast a full moon tomorrow, so I, I knew tonight we're going to be really, really big, nearly, nearly 100% full moon. So I brought a new telephoto lens with me and I thought, great opportunity to get some good photographs. Anyway, it would appear the moon doesn't want to come out tonight. There's either a thick layer of cloud or something. Um, I keep seeing it appear for a odd second or so and then it just fades away. So ain't gonna be suitable to, uh, to photograph or anything. So that will have to wait for another camp. Um, so I think I shall retire to the tent for the rest of the night. Um, I've got a 4G signal on my phone, so I can uh, look at a few things on there that should keep me entertained. So I might talk to you later, otherwise I'll see you in the morning. See you then. Good morning there. I've actually been up about two or three hours. Um, think mist and fog up here, think mist. Usually there's some fantastic views from up here, but um, I don't think I'm going to get them this morning. Um, it was so messy, I've, I've just packed all my gear away, I had my breakfast, packed all my gear away. So I'm all, I'm all set to go now. Um, the sun is actually out that way, it's, um, it's just breaking through. Uh, I was hoping to get some uh, good views behind me, over this shoulder is... Uh, Wind Hill, well you can probably hardly see it in all, all the mist. But the way the sun's shining over there, the rocks are silhouetted against the, the bright light. So I'm going to try take a few pictures looking into the sun and trying to get myself as a silhouette. See what they work out like. And then the plan then, I'm going to head over about a mile to a Hordron Stone Circle. That's a, a Bronze Age uh, stone circle very very interesting uh, sort of magical site and that so um, try these photographs and we'll we'll go over to Hordron so uh, I'll talk to you in a bit then So many uh, photo opportunities, uh, hopefully you've just been looking at some photographs and some uh, footage uh, looking directly into the sun, uh, sort of silhouetting myself, uh, hopefully they've worked out and that's what you've been looking at. Um, it certainly brightened up, um, must have been here for about an hour and a half, two hours, just taking photograph after photograph, different rocks, different angles. So. Um, I like to think they've worked out. So, back to the original plan now. Um, I'm going to head over to a Hordron uh, Stone Circle. And finally, after that climb up, 
we're uh, on Hordren Edge. In front of us is a massive uh, flat plateau, and somewhere in there is the Hordren Stone Circle. You can see up on the skyline the towering rocks of Stanage Edge. So you can see Bronze Age Man, he did pick a perfect site to build this stone circle. Right, uh, this is it, the Seven Stones of Hordron. Sounds quite magical in the name. Uh, in fact, I think there's about 13 stones on display and I think there's well over 20, someone unearthed on a dig earlier on. So, um, but it is known as the Seven Stones of Hordron. Um, to think, this is Bronze Age, so it's possibly 4,000 years old. So, 4,000 years ago, a uh, Bronze Age man was living round here. Uh, probably where we camped, he could have, uh, they could have had a settlement up there and this big plateau was their place of worship. They've certainly picked a, a nice spot surrounded by the, the hills and that. Anyway, uh, what I'll do, I'm going to sort of film it, walk around, try and show you around the different stones, etc. I'll tell you a little bit later on about certain stones. Um, earlier on, I hadn't got enough sun and it was oh, just misty and foggy and I couldn't see anything. Now I might have got too much sun. So I've got to try and film it and not get my shadow in it. That's going to be the, the difficult thing. So I'll see how I go. So uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it works out. On the horizon you can see two of the Peak District's most famous hills. Over there we've got Wind Hill, on this side we've got Loose Hill. Strange names you may think. Well, I understand there was a great battle between two tribes, probably Iron Age or Bronze Age tribes. After the battle, the winning side they went and took Win Win Hill and camped on there. And the losing side, well, I'll let you work out where they went. To get this uh, bit of footage, you've got to lay on the wet grass to get down low enough. But the movie comes first. So in front of me, we've got the fairy stone. And as you can see behind, as I drop the camera down, it mimics 
the hill behind it. On the horizon you can see the silhouette of Loose Hill and you can see how that stone actually mimics the um, the shape of, the, of, of, uh, of Loose Hill. Now I'm going to move over to the other stone now. So that's the other stone and behind that you can see Wind Hill and if I drop down literally laid on the grass now I can feel it soaking into my trousers you can actually see how that stone mimics Wind Hill the silhouette of which you can see behind Now some people say it's not true and it's just a coincidence and after 4,000 years the stones would have been weathered away but I don't believe that. I think the stone builders took that into consideration they mimicked the two main Derbyshire hills on the horizon to bring the power of those two hills into this stone circle. That's what I want to believe and that's what I am going to believe. I think it's time we left the, uh, the spirits of Hordron in peace. I'm going to make my way back now. Uh, I'll go back the way I came, up onto Bamford Edge, drop down to Bamford Railway Station, be back uh, in Sheffield in 10 minutes. Um, yeah, it's been a good camp. All right, I didn't get any pictures of the moon. That was the reason I came out. Uh, it was a full moon last night. Brought a load of camera gear with me. Uh, but no, it wasn't to be. The moon was not coming out last night. It's uh, very cloudy, although the forecast did say there would be some uh, clear period. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The moon will be there, I dare say, on the next camp. Surprisingly, I took a load of pictures into the sun. They might have worked out fantastic. I won't know until I get home. So I'm sort of eager to get home so I can put the pictures up on the screen. Uh, it's not really till then you can see how detailed they are, have they worked out. Anyway, it's been a good camp. So uh, all I can say is uh, thanks again for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next camp. Bye then.